Hey guys, welcome to Chaos Theory. My name is Nicholas Burial, and in this video, we're going to be looking at texturing our Sona speaker. Um, we already made the base materials for pretty much all the different parts, um, but here we're going to be um, starting at the mesh and see how we can create something that looks, you know, decent for our render. So. We already prepped the metal mesh material down here. It's the exact same material as the metal, but it's assigned to be on the correct placement on our speaker already. Um, so it should be fairly easy from here. The first thing we'll need is to determine how to actually do this. We could, in theory, actually model this mesh, but it'll take up a lot of polygons and it'll probably be pretty wasteful. So, you know, I figure we'll do it with um, materials and after thinking a little bit about it, um, we could be using an opacity map, so these are actual holes, um, but that'll create a problem whereas we could see through the material or the, the object itself on the opposite side as well uh, because of all the small holes. So instead of that, I'm going to create it as a diffuse map and then um, turn off the reflections and so on on where the holes itself are so they'll be completely black. So, in order to do this, we can create a diffuse map for this material. So we'll just drag from the diffuse map channel or slot here, go to general, and we can use the uh, tiles section here. So the tiles map is a procedural map uh, in 3ds Max, whereas we can um, create how many tiles we want. And you can see it looks a little bit wonky on our uh, objects. It'll we'll change that in a second. Um, but basically we can do tiles uh, in however uh, count in horizontal and vertical, we can do grouts and textures for all of this um, and all of these crazy things. So this is, a, this is a nice way of doing it. So the first thing we're going to do is apply a UVW map to our object, a UVW map, and then set it to box um, as the mapping type. This will generate uh, mapping coordinates for our actual um, textures. And in this case, because per default, every map is set to map channel one, our UVW map is also set to map channel one over here. So we're talking to this specific uh, texture and telling it how it's supposed to be set up on our object. Now the projection here is set for box. Um, if we set it to something like 17 by 17 by 17. Uh, this will make it, you know, like a cube. And since the texture here is always uh, square, uh, we kind of want to set it just so. We can scale it down to fix the height and uh, the size of the texture itself. You can see it gets a little bit problematic here on the corner sometimes, um, but we can just create a scale that fixes basically what we want. So now that we have something around this size. We can go to our horizontal count and half them, so it's two by four instead. So that makes it you know, roughly the shape we want them to. After that, we can take our horizontal and vertical gap, they're linked together right now, and increase the size to something like, I don't know, maybe four. Um, we'll make them a bit smaller. So we can half the size roughly again until, you know, you can play a little bit around here with the scaling. If it gets a little bit hard to move this, the scaling, you know, <laughs> little enough, just uh, right click the scale tool up here and notice that I'm on the gizmo on the UVW map itself. Here I can change the world offset that'll, you know, scale on, on all three axes at the same time and this will make it a little bit more precise for when we do this. We can also offset the gizmo a little bit. So if you notice here, the top is, it's only half of the top we see. So if we move it down a little bit, so it goes to something like this, so that it'll end flawlessly with the rest of it. Other than that, these are stack bonds. We need them to, to be running bonds. So we can change the preset type to running bonds instead. And already now we need to <laughs> change the scaling again a little bit. So if we go to the scaling here, and you know, I can just keep clicking it nice and easy until basically this, and we can change the offset again to something like this. So now if we 
move this to maybe here. Should be fine. All right, so now we need to change the colors. So the tiles themselves, we need to be black. And like completely black, so zero, zero, zero. The grout setup needs to be the same color as the metal part. So if we go to the middle, we can right click the diffuse color and copy that. And we can go back to our tiles, go to our grout, right click on the grout texture or the color and say paste. So now it's the exact same color and now you can see it seamlessly blends here. It's not perfect in the bottom, bottom uh, because of the scaling of this, um, of the, the total scaling of the gizmo. So if we'll, you know, if we increase the scaling maybe a little bit. Oh yeah, right. We need to actually match it up on the corner series or something like this. Eh, it's fine. We can play a little bit around with it until we're happy with the results. So right now, even here in the material setup, we can see that, okay, there are some issues because we can obviously see where the supposed holes are and where, where they're not. So in order to fix that, I'll do a copy of our tile map. So we have the exact same tile map um, and we'll put that into the reflect channel. So reflect, if you remember, we set to a almost white, um, but instead of, you know, Instead of, of using the color from here, we'll copy it because it's not completely white. We'll go to the um, new tile map down here and we'll say that the, the holes themselves are black, so they won't reflect, but the grout will need the same color as the rest of it. So that'll be fine. So it'll end up with the same properties and we can actually do the exact same thing one more time. Um, but here, because we didn't choose a completely white, I'll make it completely white. So now it's black and white. I can use it in our uh, metalness as well. Um, it's not really necessary for the metalness, but you know, just to just to be sure, I guess. All right. So now, if we go ahead and do a renderer, so we can open, we can right click on our scene. Um, go out of our UVW map, we can right click on a scene, go to V-Ray VFB and start our interactive render. And now you can see we have these nice little squares here. And it looks pretty okay. Now, if we wanted to, you know, change our materials a little bit, we need to remember that we have two materials that looks equally the same. Um, so we need to change both the metal up here, but also the metal mesh material, just to be sure. And also we have some colors copied over. We need to make sure that we're using those colors all the time. Um, so it's always the same. Other things we can do is they do have this highlight around here, um, depending on the light, because they're obviously a little bit rounded and they have you know some details in them. We can try and fake those details a little bit by creating a map, one more map and use this in the bump map channel. So this will create so that there's a bump where we're telling white is going outwards and black is going inwards. Um, and just by putting this on top of the other, um, we can kind of get probably some results from here where, you know, we'll get a little, it's not much, but you can see that they're highlighted a little bit. Um, since we're using CPU rendering, we can actually use the blur of the coordinates of that tile as well. So if I change my blur value to two, this should, as you can see here, if I exaggerate it a bit more, so like here, you can see it blurs it out a little bit. It doesn't need to be much probably. <clears throat> so now when we go to the VFB, we can go and check this out and see if it works a little bit more. Um, yeah, we won't ever get this close, but you know, it, they have some depth to them, not much, it's just a little bit. We could play around with the tiles being a little bit larger, so we can change the gap from, instead of four, we can play, place it lower to 3.8 or something like that, or we can change it higher to 4.2, you know, so they don't have the exact same size, um, and that'll make a little bit more room to, you know, to play around with how the, the pump itself works. If we want to exaggerate it more, we can go to the material itself and we have bump map over here. If we increase this value, we'll increase how much it can bump. So we can push it up to a hundred. You can see it's way too much. Um, and we actually probably could 
you know, 30 was the default before, we could probably leave it at maybe 50. So we got a little bit more. Again, we can always play a little bit around with it, but you know, something like that is probably fine. Otherwise, we'll just change it up later. All right, so we actually have the mesh pretty much done. It was pretty complex, but you know, they're all looking at map channel one. Remember that the tiles here is on map channel one. So the UVW map up here, which is, you know, it's actually fixing only all of these. So when we need to, you know, do the materials for the bottom, the buttons and the Sonos um, logo up here, we actually need to remember to change our um, UVW map map channel to something else and have more of them um, to control each part because they have different sizes and you know different settings so we'll look into that in the next video so i hope you stick around and yeah i will see you next time bye